click the switch on, the door switch doesn't do anything. This is four ways to fix your refrigerator freezer from thawing out in the winter. Uh, but first, let me take 20 seconds and explain why. So your refrigerator likes to operate at around 40 degrees. Your freezer likes to be around zero degrees. Um, and when it gets colder than 40 degrees in the garage, that means the refrigerator thinks it's fine. I don't have to run, I can turn off. And that's where the thermostat is, in your refrigerator portion. Which is fine for your refrigerator, but your freezer will start getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And stop being zero degrees and get closer to that 30, 40 degrees, everything thaws up here. So what we have to do is tell the refrigerator to run even though it's colder than it wants to be. So that goes right into step number one, which is the quickest and easiest, and that's to turn all the dials to their coldest settings. Now your refrigerator might be different from mine. Here's your refrigerator temperature setting, and here's your freezer temperature setting. And usually we keep it right in the middle on the three and the three. But in the winter, you want this to run. So you turn this dial all the way to colder, and you can hear the compressor just ticked on. And then you turn this all the way to colder. Now this is where your thermostat is above here. This is just a baffle that closes the air from getting to the refrigerator. So you need to turn both of those up to the coldest setting. So that's step number one. It's the quickest and easiest. So for fixes two through four, what we want to do is increase the temperature at this thermostat. The thermostat's right in here. We want to increase the temperature there so the refrigerator kicks on, even though it's colder than 40 degrees out here in the garage. So fix number two is to disable this door switch. And why would that work? Because you have one or two light bulbs up here. And a light bulb can get up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit on its surface. Um, and I'm talking about the older light bulbs, the incandescent ones. This doesn't work with LED bulbs. Those won't get hot enough. That, that bulb just turned on a, less than a minute ago. It's already up to 135 degrees. So if you disable this door switch, that one or two light bulbs will stay on and that will heat up this thermostat. Now, your door switch might be up here on the control panel. It might be down here on the side like mine is. Basically, you need to take a flathead screwdriver and pop that door switch out. Pop it out or push it in. Get it so that when the door shuts, it doesn't turn the light on and off. It stays on. So that's fix number two. So the third fix, which is what I'm going to be doing, is similar to fix number two, except I'm going to be installing just a switch. And I'll show you how I do that. But first I want to talk fix about fix number four, and that involves installing a heater element up here in this board. So let me take uh, this control panel down and explain what I'm going to be doing. And for that, I need a quarter inch socket driver. Um, sometimes you can use a flathead screwdriver, but some type of quarter inch socket driver works on 99% of these screws here. Now maybe your board has four screws. Mine just has two in the front and then it hinges down. And you can see here that this is the thermostat and this, there's nothing here, it's just a baffle. So that's what opens and closes the baffle between the freezer and the refrigerator. And this is your defrost timer. It tells your freezer when to defrost on and off. Now, fix number four is installing a heater element somewhere up here, somewhere underneath your defrost timer. So the way that works is the heater element heats up to around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and it tells this thermostat to run even when it's cold out here. I'm gonna be using these two light bulbs to run and heat up this thermostat. But how do we keep them on even when the door is closed? I'm gonna be installing a switch somewhere on the outside panel so I can just click it in and the light bulb will stay on. What we have to do is find the wires that come from the door switch down here. Sometimes it's much easier. Sometimes the switch is right here and you can just splice the two wires. But my two wires are right up here. And the way I can check it is, if I unplug this, and I take a short little lead of a wire, I can connect two ends and turn that on. Basically, I'm making a jump and not going through the switch. So here's the switch that's not activated. I can use two wires, and I can jump those two connections. So I'm gonna be installing a switch which does this. 
And again, I'm only doing this with the power on to show you how it should be done. You should definitely unplug the refrigerator um, before doing anything and messing with the wires. Now again, fix number four is installing that heater element, but most of the time people install the switch anyways because they didn't want that heater element running in the summer. So they wanted to be able to switch it off in the summer, switch it on in the winter. So most of the times people were buying a little switch like this anyways. So what I'm gonna be doing is, I had a different switch in the basement and it fits perfectly right here in a little uh, opening in the Most of the times you're gonna to have to get a Dremel or a drill or a hacksaw and cut out a little opening for one of these two switches. But here's a switch I prepared earlier like the cooking shows and I'm just gonna put the switch right here on the bottom where I can access it, click it on and off in the summer and winter and I'm gonna connect it to two of the wires that go to this door switch here on the bottom. So it will bridge that switch so I'll be able to override the switch. Why not just do it this way and have the light bulbs create the heat instead of using that heater element? Which from reading a lot of the comments there was a lot of issues with people saying it burned out or it melted their plastic. So I'm going to try this simpler, cheaper, easier method first. So after taking this little switch, which I did check the amperage. Um, every switch has a little voltage and amperage uh, rating on them. This is good for two amps. I took my other voltmeter and I clamped it around one of these two wires and it read 0.1 amps. This is rated for three amps, this switch, so I'm good to go. This cord is just from an old lamp cord that I used, just cut it off. So for this I grabbed a couple things. First, I unplugged uh, the refrigerator. For this, I'm definitely gonna not be working on it um, when it's plugged in. Second, I grabbed this type of wire stripper which will grab the wire and pull it apart. You could do it with this, but I think this will work a little better. Um, and I grabbed a, a flashlight, a headlamp that I can use, and a hat because it's negative eight outside and it's freezing in this garage. So we have these pulled apart and I'm just gonna try to strip them right here in the middle. That worked. Perfect. The right tool for the job. See, I was able to strip the wires right in the middle. Otherwise, I'd have had to use these little uh, wire clamps, cut the wire and twist them all together, but I think this should work. Next, I'm gonna feed the switch up through the hole in the bottom. And I will connect these wires to that. So there's our spliced connection. I'm going to put some electrical tape on this and then reconnect it. So we have everything wrapped nice and securely with electrical tape. Those new connections aren't going anywhere. We can reconnect the switch because we've made the splice and now we can lift this back into place. Okay, now we can plug the refrigerator back in and test it out. Now here is the refrigerator as it looks. The, the button is right up here. Right now the door switch still turns it on and off. Let's see when we click the switch on. The door switch doesn't do anything. Shut the door and know that the light is still on. So now we have a switch so that we can shut this door and know that the light bulbs are still on there, making more heat and making that thermostat run. So my recommendation is try the easy ones first. If that doesn't work and this is still thawing out, then you can go buy that heater element. You already have a switch installed. It should be easy to do. So let me know what you think. Thanks.